Thank you, Ifa and Nim and the Historical Archive of Limassol. Uh, and thank you for inviting me to this uh, event. Um, I have the opportunity to talk about um, a subject that is very um, interesting to me. Um, so uh, building on the subject of threads and textiles as the event of the thread is about, um, this presentation will have a more political and social perspective on textiles. Um, as you can see in the title, we will discuss um, the textile industry in Cyprus and its relationship with women's um, oppression and women's emancipa emancipation or empowerment uh, during the colonial era. The historical event that will connect all this um, is a strike made by women spinners um, which took place in the textile mill of Famagusta in 1938. But um, before going into it, I want us to approach this story that I'm going to tell you as a case study or as one example of a history of social struggles which took place in Cyprus for women's rights and for women's emancipation um, during the colonial era, a history which is, um, uh, has not been appropriately appreciated. You don't need to believe me um, on this. You could just ask uh, any Cypriot um, if there was such a thing as a women's movement in Cyprus, um, in the modern history of Cyprus, a movement worth mentioning, I'm saying. Most people uh, will answer no. Um, maybe you could find someone who knows something about um, women's history in other parts of the world. Maybe someone will know about the British suffragettes uh, that uh, fought, struggled for uh, votes for women in the beginning of the 20th century in Britain, or maybe they would know Simone de Beauvoir and like Rosa Luxemburg, if you are talking to a leftist, or uh, it depends on the political affiliations of the person who will answer. But why I'm saying this is that whomever you talk to, you will see a common belief that women's movement either did not really happen in Cyprus or some movement happened, but it wasn't a big deal. It was nothing quite admirable. This impression is dominant even in the circles of historians, as I am, uh, and gender activists, uh, who often suggest that women's rights were just given to the Cypriot women by the so-called civilized world, uh, while Cypriot women had not even asked for it. Um, so one of my intentions with this presentation is to show that this is far from the truth and that despite the extreme lack of recognition, there is a story worth telling about the struggles of Cypriot women for emancipation and it deserves as much attention at least as any other national history of women of the world. One just need to pay attention to the primary sources because um, you cannot find this in the textbooks or the bibliography. So getting into our story, we need to understand the context um, in order to understand um, what led to the strike of 1938, which is what we are talking about, and what is its um, historical significance. So just the historic line, um, in 1878, Cyprus passed from the government of the Ottoman Empire to the government of the United Kingdom. 
Um, among others, this was a milestone in regard to the process of modernization. Although the process had begun in some ways before uh, 1878, because, for example, education had begun and some um, financial development, but the pass from a very traditional agricultural empire, such as the Ottoman, to the United Kingdom, which at those time represented the new world, that is the world of financial and technological development and the world of modern nation states and democracy as much as democracy it was. And this was making um, the process to modernity much faster and was also establishing a, a political context for a modern capitalist economy and the development of a modern society overall in Cyprus as opposed to the traditional agricultural societies of the past. However, this modernity came with a lot of contradictions. One of them was that the British government was celebrated as a step towards freedom and individual rights it was, however, a colonization of the island, so the relationship between master and some kind of a submissive um, subject, it was there. Um, on the social level, for the popular strata, the process from tradition to modernity was quite violent, as the old um, the old house-based production, which was taking place in a quite protected atmosphere within the family and within the rituals of the agricultural community, moved from the house to becoming a factory-based uh, product production. This is the Cyprus loom, which is like the argalios, the traditional loom of, uh, for spinning in Cyprus. Um, and this is also um, the Cyprus loom. And uh, I couldn't, I really tried, I, could, I couldn't find anywhere uh, some picture with, the spin, with a spinning factory or, the, or a textile mill. I don't know if you have in this archive. I haven't asked you. Uh, but I found this silk industry factory to give the idea of the beginning of the 20th century where women here prepare the cocoon for the silk. Um, so this um, transition is happening uh, towards the factory-based production, which was often experienced by women as much crueler than the previous structures. Because um, for women in particular, um, the textile industry, especially the textile industry, is representative of the new order and the rupture of the old order. Um, from, a traditionally, from a traditional way of spinning, um, spinning began to take place in factories which were characterized by really low wages and extremely long working hours. Labor rights and social insurances were completely out of the question and children's work was the norm, uh, like teenage girls between 12 and 16 years of age were working in the textile mill of Famagusta and other factories. Um, it's a characteristic image of the 1930s in Cyprus that there were a lot of women of the popular strata who were working as servants in the houses of richer uh, families. They were called dhules, um, which means slaves. Um, and these women could um, many times be of like 10 years old and looking after, to taking care of the children of the family who were like five years old. So the um, children's work was a very common thing. Um, 
On the political level, women faced one more contradiction in the process towards modernization, let's say. Um, all the new ideas which constructed the ideology of the modern world, like enlightenment, democracy, rights, freedom, they all seem to rupture the traditional social and gender, to, to question the gender relations and the strict patriarchal structures of the Cypriot society. They did not, however, mean the disruption of male dominance. So the British authorities were very clear that politics and political administration was and should remain the privilege of the men. And it was, of course, clear that the local elites, um, as well as the majority of the educated middle and upper classes, although they were very fond of democracy and freedom in other situations, they were not seeing women as appropriate to practice such ideals. So this exclusion of women was manifested in the creation uh, of the first legislative body which was established by the new government, which was resembling a representative body, let's say a parliament, but uh, only a very small part uh, of the population was allowed to vote. Uh, you had to be a man and have some property, which it was for a very <laughs> little percentage of the population. So in this context, while women and children were an important part of the labor force, um, the women entered the world of paid labor under the framework of the traditional inequalities and the gender stereotypes that marked the centuries of patriarchy which preceded them. So they were concentrated in occupations that would fit into um, traditional women's work, and they were seen as cheap labor, paid less, usually half uh, than their male colleagues. Um, in the 1930s, which is our peri the period we are uh, interested about, the limited representation ceased, even that limited representation, uh, which was uh, part of the Legislative Council was also seized because a nationalist uprising to, took place in 1931 and resulted in the colonial government adopting a particularly harsh and authoritarian model of governance. In this context, public gatherings were prohibited unless they ensured a relevant license in advance by the government. So we are at a space where politics is considered to be a male job, public gatherings are generally prohibited, and the labor movement was just beginning to reorganize because they had this um, hit, let's say, due to the authoritarian government of the 1930s. So in this context, there were conditions in the textile industry were extremely difficult. Um, and often, labor accidents were frequent and tragic. Um, we have a testimony saying that a woman had cut her finger in the spinning machine. And since there was no insurance or some kind of labor rights to ask for something because of the accident, she uh, placed her finger in a vase of alcohol to, to take it to show it to her supervisor <laughs> uh, and say, I want a race because this is what happens here. So this must be from maybe from the beginning of the 30s. Um, there is a problem with um, the historical sources because all of this is personal testimonies, all, I, I, you can't find, um, it's not easy to cross references, it's just you find different testimonies from different people and if it, it's suitable to the rest of the narrative, <laughs> it must be true, <laughs> probably. So this was one testimony. A another testimony 
it was another woman who said that she remembered herself reaching to the textile mill at three o'clock in the morning, one, one morning, because she was so afraid that she was going to be late uh, and that her supervisor would beat her. Uh, so she, she was there, she found herself at three in the morning there from her stress uh, to be there. So in this context, in May 1938, approximately 65 women spinners began an all-female strike in the textile mill of Famagusta, demanding um, to increase their wage, in, wage increase, eight hours of work because work was um, supposed to take place according to the sun, uh, the sunrise and the sunset, as, as I, if I understand uh, correctly. So um, they asked eight hours of work. And they also asked for some measures for the improvement of the environment because they weren't able to breathe well in the factory. Um, but According to another testimony, again, uh, this was by a leading figure of the women's movement of Famagusta, Fanny Calopsidiotu Olimbiu. Um, the incident, which was the tip of the iceberg and caused the beginning of the spinner strike, was also an accident. A woman's hair was caught in the spinning machine. And although her co-workers managed to shut it off before it could kill her, actually, but it, it did um, disfigure her face in this process. So this created this immediate reaction, and they began this uh, strike. And their uh, struggle was as cruel as their work co conditions. Um, there were physical fights between the strikers and the strike breakers, as well as with the uh, police. Um, a female stri strike breaker broke the hands of a leading figure of the strike, Cleo Fodi, um, and the latter with at least two more women. Some say it was 10 women, some say it was three women that were uh, in, in jail, were sent to prison uh, for two months for their participation. Um, well, the accusation is was violence against the strike breakers. So they were taken to prison, but this was um, unparalleled in the Cypriot society at the time. It was an extremely rare situation for women to be imprisoned for any kind of collective unrest. And um, these spinners were among the very first women who were imprisoned for their participation in the labor movement. I have some testimony saying that the first women imprisoned for labor movement rights was um, a nurse from Nicosia, or a, a woman who participated in the nurses' strikes in Nicosia a bit before um, this, but I'm not sure. Uh, we are sure that these spinners were among the very first. Um, and I want to mention here that um, the newspaper Eleftheria was describing this strike in 1938 as an unusual phenomenon in Cyprus that called for special attention. Um, this was a radical turn of events that the poor spinners showed an unwaver unwavering spirit during a women-led strike, beaten and beat police and strike breakers, and even imprisoned. And this caused a lot of um, discussion in the newspapers. So an unprecedented wave of donations and solidarity occurred across the working people of Famagusta and all over the cities and villages of Cyprus. The strike lasted for uh, almost three months, which was very long for the time, and it was possible because of the massive financial support to the strike 
and it also resulted in a 24 strike, 24 hours strike in Famagusta by the workers of the city. Like there was a strike uh, um, as a solidarity strike. Um, although the strike did not result in the satisfaction of the spinners' demands, it consisted a historical experience for the working women. And um, one year after the strike in 1939, the first Working Women's Union was formed as an initiative of women inspired by the Spinner strike um, and of the wave of solidarity that accompanied it. Um, and uh, this was like with the Spinners, some teachers and some women affiliated to the left, they created this Working Women's Union, which for for our presentation, what is interesting for this subject is first of all that the Working Women's Union created in Famagusta uh, started to uh, go to other villages and cities uh, and resulted having like two and a half um, thousand members in 1943 or yeah. 43 or 44, but this was a very massive women's organization for the time, and it began from this uh, strike, actually. And um, something else that, in, to close this, is that the, the slogan and the stamp of the organization of the Working Women's Union was, uh, work is honor. And the first event that they did as, a, as an organization, according to a testimony again, was a small theater where they took different casseroles and um, kitchen pots and they put it somewhere and they broke it all together to show that um, work is a, a, a way to liberate women from the slavery of the house. So for me this is important because, or it is, it is interesting because the textile industry which was experienced as very oppressive at the beginning of this industry, industrial economy, um, turned into uh, a possibility for women's emancipation and liberation. Uh, because it showed them a different way of not being slaves to the house and being, for the first time, financially um, independent. So I could continue <laughs> a lot about a lot of stories um, about women's emancipation, um, the working women's unions, the, and there are other stories of women's movement also. For example, before this, we had an educated middle-class feminist movement uh, from a different perspective, uh, also in Cyprus, also under-researched. Um, but I think this was enough to document my main argument that there is a story worth telling of the women's struggles in Cyprus. And it does include heroic, um, heroic stories or moments of resistance and women's um, struggles. Um, here is a picture I could find from the um, spinning, but um, this is a later picture. It's not of the spinning factory or the textile mill. I couldn't find one from them. I did find these three women who had a leading role in the strike, according to one source. I am not sure who they are, however. Um, I want to close with something different. Like, why does this matter? Why does it matter to learn about different um, women's stories? Um, I feel that um, a whole generation of women especially after 1970, uh, 74, 
was um, grew with these images of women crying and being victims of the war, which of course is one part of the history. Uh, and it's true that they, women were victimized uh, during the war. But I feel that this is only one side of women's history. And there are other sides. Um, there are sides of women struggling, uh, empowering, etc. And I think it is important um, not to say the history from one-sided story, but to see the whole complexity of women's personalities and women's history for us also to, under to know our roots and be empowered by them. Thank you, thank you.